We're live. There we go, guys. Thanks for <laughs> jumping on again today. We've got a special for you. Not only do, do we have Nick Baldwin and myself on, which unfortunately doesn't happen as often, but today it does. We've got a couple of guys here who created a company called Showingly. Jonathan Martinez and Andrew Coca. They both run the company, young guys, brilliant. And we're going to show you what they've created because it's growing super fast. And a lot of a lot of influencers and people with money have been investing into the company. So guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Dude, I'm, I'm, excited excited to be here. Here. I'm excited you're here because we all know that there has been a disruption in the showing management space and agents want options, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we came across Showingly, we were like, well, this company looks like they know what they're doing. Their tech is very forward facing. There's a lot of stuff on the agent side and the consumer side, stuff that you haven't seen before. So, you know, of course, in classic LCA fashion, we wanted to, you know, bring you guys on and dig into it a little bit. Love it. Yeah. Excited to do so. I know uh, there's many ways we could communicate what we're up to. I think uh, the one thing I'd say is I wish I could tell everyone to download it right now, but we enter markets by either partnering with an MLS or we have the MLS. Uh, sometimes we end up doing a data agreement where we're not just uh, offered in there and then they instead just provide us the data to operate. So I want to say we have a dozen MLSs or so now, but yeah. you know, unfortunately it's not that everyone can just go and use it right away. Right. So. All right. Can you, can you show us a little well, bit about what, what it does? Real quick, though, I think before we get into it, like, why don't you get, uh, tell us about yourselves? Like, who are you? Yeah. Like, uh, what do you like to eat? Yeah. What, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite comic book, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, you're always prepared with uh, <laughs> comic book information. Oh so. gosh. Well, um, you don't have to answer that question, but yeah, yeah, where comic are you guys not from? Someone. Like who, how did you get into this specific arena? Yeah. Management? Um, so Andrew and I both, uh, we have an entrepreneurship background. Um, Andrew went to school out in the, uh, the Northeast and, you know, for me, I, I got involved with um, really entrepreneurship in New York city. So, um, but outside of that, more particular to real estate, uh, Andrew and I were, were formerly agents and um, did pretty well um, as, as single agents and um, really just uh, starting, starting our, you know, our background um, at KW. Um, and, and really from there, Andrew and I end up teaming up and, and building a team together uh, of about 30 agents. And during that whole process, uh, just building the team, we learned a lot about, uh, you know, other sol solutions and verticals inside of real estate and, you know, where the needs may lie. And um, there, you know, as, as an entrepreneurship uh, minded person, entrepreneurs, uh, we, we began to poke holes and uh, eventually we kind of landed on showing management and, and that's, you know, where showingly came to be. And um, from there, uh, you know, we let go of our real estate team um, really at the, at the peak of it all um, to, to pursue showingly and uh, really, really operate in the showing management space and drive deep, deep value there. Love it, dude. Um, I thought you were going to say something like one time I was trying to show a house and I couldn't get in. <laughs> and then I was like, there's got to be a better way. Just <laughs> you know, that might have happened unrelated or really related probably a few dozen times. So, yeah, uh, yeah, no, that's absolutely. I mean, I think the context of being an agent and being a team leader gives insight as to, to how everything is so jumbled up and in, in a mess and not really too efficient. Um, and so that context definitely is why we're here for sure. Well, take us, through, take us through that back end, guys. We'd like to see what it looks like, what's under the hood, because people are, are wondering what the hell this is, right? How does it make our life easier as an agent? Sure. I think I have it on my phone here, and I think I just joined so I can absolutely share. And uh, I might want to yell at the devs to not push any staging environment stuff while we're <laughs> screen sharing here. So uh, let me do that real quick for you guys. What's that? While you're doing that, Jonathan, what's the logo behind you? What is that? How'd you come up with that uh, arrow going in an almost circle? Um, actually, that that is we used to have a different logo, um, and uh, we just wanted to come up with something that uh, was a bit more 
tech forward. Um, our, our designers have been bugging us for, for some time. And so uh, that, that's, that's how we came up with that. Still has the house and the arrow, um, but a more uh, tech forward, um, I guess, vibe that you get from that logo. And because we, yeah. I was going to say, Mike and Marquise could come on and talk for probably an hour on, on that one question yes. on why, why this logo, but uh, oh man. Yeah, we, we spun our wheels for some time, but we wanted something that, that repres that was friendly enough um, but tech enough and uh, that represented really our platform really, really well, given that, you know, Andrew's about to hop into the agent um, app, um, but we also have a, a consumer application uh, where we loop in home buyers and sellers into the, the showing process, making things a, a bit easier, removing duplicate entry for agents as, you know, they connect with their home buyers and sellers. Nice. All right, let's take a look. Cool. So jumping right into this, what we love about the application and the platform is that it feels familiar. This is something that everyone on the planet just knows what they're looking at. It's a map with listings. And what's nice is you can pan around and find a property you want, or you can go and filter the way you're used to on major home search platforms, or because it's showing management focused, if you have a listing you want to do showings on already, you can just search by address or by ID, and it's incredibly straightforward in, in doing so. And what's nice about this that we're building in the near term is the ability to not only save searches, but present safe searches through this interface to your connected clients as well. So a lot of really neat things you can do with the platform that we've set up. Now, if I jump into a home or a property here, what's nice is when you load in, Again, it's a screen and an experience that feels familiar. And so you have all the home info and the pictures and everything you're used to, but the difference is I can schedule. And so here, if I want to schedule, what'll happen is I can come here, look at the listings availability. I can toggle on and off my own schedule as well. And then ultimately add a client. I can pick a date and a time. And here, if I want to, I can delegate this and have a licensed showing assistant pick it up. And so. Uh, this gives some insight into our history too, because when we first started years ago, delegation was our main offering. And then we, we built delegation and showing management in, as a means of, I guess, a natural part of showing management. I mean, when you need to do a showing, but you're not available, you want someone else to do it on your behalf. And so we thought those two tied hand in hand very closely. And so that's why you always have the ability here if you want to delegate a showing. So um, obviously 99% of people just schedule and they use it for showing management non-delegation related. If I schedule, then of course, that's how that would work. I could also queue it up. And so here, if I queued up one or multiple, I can come here, view my queue, set the times for all of them and schedule in batch. So pretty straightforward. Clear okay. That. So the agent, okay. Okay. So this is an agent and a consumer portal at the same time. Is that what I'm seeing? This is the agent application. Okay. There's a separate application. Agents can have their home buyers and sellers download. Okay, got it. So, and this is, this almost looks like a consumer portal. That's how clean it looks to me, um, which is pretty about sweet. The, uh, the agents get some tech love, we thought. <laughs> right, well, I was saying like, it's usually, about time. Usually the agent size looks like Atari, like Commodore 64. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we kind of like, we kind of get the, we kind of get screwed on that end but this is this is awesome forgive my uh my colorado avalanche push notifications coming in we got uh trade oh, that's all right approaching so i won't judge you on that but, uh, <laughs> but uh yeah i think overall uh really just the platform as a whole is is really uh built for simplicity and convenience and um <laughs> We split hairs over the smallest things just to make uh, the interaction for agents a bit easier. I, I know a lot of the times you talk about other real estate solutions, and they're they're very they're not so intuitive. Uh, they're very hard to use. They're kind of clunky, and um, and so for us, we take a lot of pride in not only you know giving agents the the functionality that they really want for even the smallest corner cases, but also uh, driving 
uh, driving a great experience inside the application. And I know Andrew's showing you our, our mobile application, but we uh, we are for agents. They can go online and sign on, uh, you know, from our web portal as well. And that's how also how we integrate with with MLSs is we like to have that that nifty button on every listing and so schedule with showing me. Uh, and, and so that's really the relationship that we push for uh, to further drive convenience for the members inside of those MLSs, you know, and the agents. But in any case, you know, at, at minimum, we, 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 get, we get the data and then we're able to operate and then we, we push for a, a deeper integration there. So it's, Can it's, you click on that property again? I just want to see uh, again. Okay, so you click on the property. Okay, you got the photos there. Yep. All right, when you schedule... And you have the agent's number. Okay, when you click on schedule, I just want everyone to kind of see it again, what happens. When you schedule, does that go, okay, so does that go to the agent for confirmation or whoever is, whoever is uh, like, it does it go to the owner of the home? So this is purely agent to agent in terms of the agent okay. platform. And of course, when I'm an agent, I'm connecting a listing. And configuring that listing, I can put appointment required. I can put client must approve, listing agent must approve, both must approve. Um, and and in that sense, I can add a co-listing agent. I can add up to three seller clients, and then ultimately configure both the notifications and the approval settings. Mm -hmm. And then that way, when someone schedules, if uh, of course when the buyer agent schedules, it'll go to the listing agent, but it can also go to their connected seller client for approvals if that's what they've configured. Yeah. Okay, pretty sweet, that's sweet. Yeah, so this is basically like on the go. You can like, you know, cause we all know how how clients can be, right? Like, ooh, we just saw this pop up, right? Like, and now you can just go to the app and request a showing and hope that you get a response rather quickly, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, even with agents, when they're on the go, uh, you, you know, they may have a specific tour schedule, um, but maybe there's a house, you know, in that while they're, you know, showing those homes that um, they see in the neighborhood and they want to get in, we, we have the full uh, IDX feed or all the data for any listing. And so um, an agent can actually ping their location. We take their exact location or the buyers can too. And uh, they can see what's available around them um, in proximity to where they're at, which is really neat. Uh, more of that on the go functionality. Maybe what we could do is uh, after this, we could hop into like a basic connect listings uh, flow and show them that and how they loop in their sellers and, and how you configure showing text and all that. Um, it might be, it might add a lot of clarity on the listing agent side of things. I would guys that definitely would. There's a, I want to go through three questions, four questions here really quick though, because they pertain to this. Two of them are around the PED. Have you guys thought about integrating the, the PED form as part of the process for scheduling or no, that's the, that's the COVID form. Just saying that, Hey, it's COVID there's COVID out there. and warning. I, So we have disclaimers, but I, I guess we've never been asked to do that or been asked about that, but that makes sense to do that. So we mm -hmm. can easily just do a pop-up and have them approve and uh, make sure the form's filled for, for these. That makes sense to me if, yeah. if that's a good it's idea. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty easy yeah, to do. I like that one. And then Paul's asking, do you provide the service in Canada? <laughs> you know, we don't currently, but we just this week um, laid the foundation and groundwork to be uh, green lighted for for Canada and international if we need to. So yep. uh, we, I think we're going to start reaching out to MLSs. So I think we we will be able to. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And then Paul, if you if you know any MLSs out there, just reach out to the guys. Um, can one of you pop in your email in there so that people can contact you or whoever they need to contact you? Throw it to their MLS if they belong to that MLS. Yeah, I'll put both of our emails in here. And anyone? And then, uh, here's a couple. So of if this is coming in here, Curtis says with the PED forms, you can just put a link to the PED form that's specific to the state or the area because they're so different per state, right? So that was a smart idea there on uh, on Curtis. It, it, Go ahead, Nick. I'm just curious about what when the when the showing gets accepted um it does it connect to a google calendar or some other sort of calendar like in your phone so if i jump out of here and go to the menu i can see that i have the the calendar in here and it'll show up in 
in this calendar, but this calendar also integrates currently with Google Cal. It will integrate with Outlook and Apple okay. Calendar in the next quarter. Those are proving a little trickier uh, than Google. Google was was very straightforward. Mm -hmm. Easy. Nice. I love that, guys. All right. A couple of other questions here. Is Showingly available in Central Florida, the Stellar MLS specifically? We, I believe, demoed Stellar, and I think we, we need to move that along. I think the thing with some of these guys is some of them move incredibly quickly, and some of them have the board meeting cycle and, and all of those cycles. So uh, the only thing that always rings true across all MLSs is that if agents and brokers reach out and, and push that along, that always helps. Nice. So those of you in Stellar would love uh, some, some messaging on your part to them, if anything. Otherwise, we will keep pushing as hard as possible, though we are going live with Miami MLS in the coming, uh, I, think, I think we're launching a beta we, we have like two stages of beta and then launch. I think we're in the second stage of beta now. So yeah. nice. Miami is right around the corner. I love it. Exciting. Guys, any any real live call centers or is this all functioned by uh, automations and the tech that you've built? So as far as the call center, we have built an internal administrative uh, site for our support staff to be able to schedule on the behalf of of agents, so we will have call to schedule functionality included in Showingly Plus coming two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. So within the month, we will have the call to schedule um, included in our Showingly Plus offering. It works right now. We just we have to have a way to to include it in one of the products because obviously having the support staff and uh, Hiring people to field calls is not cheap, but it's it's already happening right now. So we'll be all set with that. So um, let's let's see like what the consumer side looks like. So I guess the, one of the value propositions is that you can invite your client into into the app, right? So they kind of get a home search app that's connected to the agent side. Yes. So the client layout is similar. And what we like to say is that the difference between our consumer app is that unlike major home search sites that will just take agents data and then sell them their leads, we're the only platform that connects an, a consumer to an agent and, and does so free of charge. We don't, we don't sell people back to agents. We don't sell uh, leads back to agents, but our consumer app needed to be as beautiful and convenient as major home search sites so that, um, so that when you have a, let's just say a, a home buyer client, you don't want them texting you screenshots of Redfin and Zillow and Realtor after you configured <laughs> your, your, your MLS property drip. You know what I mean? That's just, that, that's yeah. the most frustrating thing. So to give them an extension of you and your business that they'll actually use was was very important. All right, I like that. Yeah, that's pretty sweet because there's like, you know, a, a value in there. Do you have a version of, of that that we can see or, or no? I am not sure that my dev app is going to even work because I didn't update dev. Staging, if it said staging in front of it, that's how you know I, I got it recently. But I will give it a shot, and if it doesn't, okay, yeah, no worries. It's it's about, it might not be compatible, but just so we'll, everyone knows, it's still fingers crossed, right? <laughs> yeah, looks like it loaded in fine. I, yeah, I'm not sure if uh, what all I'll be able to do here, but yeah, this is exactly what you'd see. This is a consumer application. Of course, the uh, difference here being that I go to my agent, and this is this is my agent, right? And so I am connected awesome. in app to him. Cool. I really like that. So now, I just want to ask a quick, can we give feedback what, as they go is this oh, like the, when the client comes through and they see the home with us, can they give us feedback through there and can we forward it to the agent? So there's a couple things that you can do. We don't let your buyer ever write anything that can be seen by the listing agent. All communication is either agent to agent or consumer to their agent, but there's a couple ways that you can, you can do, exactly what you've asked. For example, if I go here, let's just 
Yeah, it all works. If I go here on the consumer application, I can leave a note for my agent. If I am on the agent application, I can leave feedback for the listing agent. So, oh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, so what cool. I like about this for the consumer side, I mean, it's, is it connected directly to the MLS then? Yeah, the MLS data is the, is the fuel for the platform, which is why we need to be in those markets and not okay. anyone across the nation can just download it. Yeah. Well, my point is that's a huge value proposition because there's nothing more accurate than your MLS. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Like literally it goes into the MLS and it probably populates onto the showingly app rather quickly, I would assume. Right. Like, cause sometimes the problem with other portals is because they have to go through all these different syndication uh, channels, you know, it can sometimes take a couple of days. And by that time in this market, the house is sold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? and it, it has to be that quickly because, and actually I know you guys love the apps, but I'm going to jump out of that here. And what I'll do real briefly is share from, from desktop, but. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, it's, it's the, the fact that we have, I would say, the listing, uh, the, the need to configure your listing immediately is very important for what, an agent when they're going to use a showing management platform. And so we have to have incredibly quick speeds and updated data and sanitize everything. So that is a big driver for that as well. But it also, of course, makes things incredibly accurate on the buy side of of this whole thing too. So if I go here to, um, and, and I'm doing this through landing page because I, what happens is if you have a listing, it'll automatically know you have a listing. And because I'm not an agent with listings really coming from the MLS, I, I won't be able to show you through my staging account right now, but um, this is what you'll see to configure your listing as a listing agent. So you will be able to select the type of course and then ultimately, if it's appointment required, you can say that you need to approve or a client must approve or both or either. And then I can add a co-listing agent and up to three, uh, up to three seller clients. And then what's nice about this is that I can click here, allow unverified showing requests. And when I allow unverified showing requests, what will happen is, and we'll go down to here, you can, we generate a link for that agent that they can share in places that they trust or to people uh, for scheduling purposes. So here, this is what that link would look like. And that's how you get an appraiser or an inspector to be able to schedule, even though they're not able to download the app or log into a Showingly account. That's really cool, man. It's really smooth. Great job on the creation of that. It looks really nice. Thank you. That's pretty sweet. So Alvin, one of our moderators in Lab Coats is asking, what's up, Alvin? The consumer requests an appointment. If alerts me, it alerts me first. I set the appointment agent to agent to ensure I'm available for the showing. Is this the flow? Yep. Yep. All right. Makes it I audibly that makes yeah, sense. No. Let me yeah. uh so you're so it can be it can there can be multiple entry points. So they're they're saying the buyer makes a request, the request goes to the buyer's agent, the buyer agent says, Okay, cool, I can conduct this showing and then um request it to the, the listing agent. So yes. That, that, that's how the flow goes. Those are multiple entry points. It doesn't always have to come from the buyer. Um, the buyer's agent can go directly and actually schedule like they always would. Um, whether, whether the, obviously if the buyer does it, they know they're looped in that process if they're connected with their agent in, in the platform. But if the agent goes in and actually says, hey, I want to schedule the showing one, two, three main tomorrow at 2 p.m. and actually ties their buyer to that showing, then the buyer is going to know um, that their age, their agent went and requested a showing at 2 p.m. tomorrow, 123 Main Street. Yeah. And uh, when they do that. And I would just say that the rule of thumb is always your clients can never do anything that'll uh, get you in trouble or be annoying for anyone. So yeah. like a buyer that you have connected in the app would never be able to send a notification to the listing agent for a showing. It first goes through you and then you can change the time on them or you can not accept it or you can say that works for me or you could delegate it whatever yeah. you want to do yeah <clears throat> i like all it. right i like that guys when's it coming to california 
I have a, I think we have a meeting on the books with San Diego in 30 minutes, actually. Yeah. So when, oh, yeah. when are you coming to New Jersey? Garden State MLS, New Jersey MLS. Come on, what's going on? I mean, <laughs> man, we really want to go there. I think uh, Sean, one of the uh, more prominent Keller Williams OPs over there yeah. has been, has been uh, bugging us as well, trying to get us over to to their MLS. So hopefully that one goes well too. Yeah. There's a lot of these on the second or third meetings yeah. now that we've been talking to for months. So <sighs> hey, I hope everybody wants to know when 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 it's know, coming to their be, city. They're like, hey, this is all this is great, guys. But when when can I use them? When yeah, I yeah, I know. Um, yeah, no. So uh, it's it's I like you know the 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 intuitiveness and the ease of use and the fact that like, you know, once it's very up to date, as soon as a, you know, because it's connected to the MLS, the data comes right from the MLS. It's not kind of going through different channels of syndication, you know, cause a lot of times with syndication, it's like a game of telephone, you know, it's three beds and then it shows up as four beds and then your seller yells at you and you get fired and then you're broke. So we don't like when that happens. Um, so I like that the data is very accurate you know which is pretty sweet yeah heck yeah i like that and guys. uh i just played around with the consumer side and you know i'm not going to schedule an appointment in colorado but it's kind of cool to see like you know it's just like you're looking on any of the big search portals except you know your agent is attached to it which is pretty awesome Hey guys, if so somebody wants to add it to oh, their, and they have their own. What what are they, what should they do? Should they just email their MLS? What should they do? I would say please do in fact email the MLS, um, letting them know that you would really love to have Showingly as an offering in the marketplace. I think it's very, uh, it's not aggressive at all in the sense that we don't need them to pay us or license it from us. We just need to get the data from them. We and cases can even pay them for a normal standard data relationship. Uh, they just have to know that their members want it. And sometimes yeah. that'll be the issue is they're like, well, I just don't know. Hey, can you explain the brokerage suite? So you can, how does this work? You have to obviously partner with an MLS, mm. but what's the brokerage platform like? you know, in case like someone wanted to. Well, what's like really a, neat about the brokerage platform is that brokerages have a unique issue in that they don't have the same problems as agents. Brokerages really, they want to build their business and they want to build buy-in to their vision, to their systems, their structure, their value proposition. And what will happen is they'll usually make a Facebook group. And that Facebook group, is okay to post things in, but you're driving your agents to a platform where they're gonna see all these other groups, real estate related. Uh, they'll see posts about other brokerages and other structures and they'll go back to the broker and say, can you can you do this split for me? Or can you do this this way, right? And so what's nice is the brokerage instead can control all this narrative and information flow and training and events through the platform the agent is already using for their showing management other parts of their day-to-day -day. so it's a really a neat thing that we can offer the brokerage yeah that's very okay. true guys eric's got a great question that other people are probably thinking and that's what's your end game with this because they're scared of what zillow did with with showing time what's what's that look like guys i would say that we've already turned down offers because the idea is that we are doing something that's really never been done before in this in unifying this the real estate awesome. technology uh, one dimensional solutions into a platform and we really want to see that through in a way that's valuable for all the stakeholders not just these shallow consumer facing prop tech companies and so for us we would not sell unless it was to a company that had that same vision and had all of the stakeholders interest in mind, including agents, brokerages. And in that way, no matter what happens, it's in line with what everyone wants, not just what people want for one of the stakeholders yeah. of the process. And so uh, because of that, it's, it's a really 
I guess it's it's not that risky for anyone in that we are holding that line. So yeah. no matter what we do, as long as it's in line with that in that vision, it's uh, it's better for everyone. I so, like that. Marty, Marty Gum's got a good question. What's up, Marty? I think he's from Lake of the Ozarks. I think, Marty, I'm not sure. Uh, build per listing or tiered. How does it work? How is it billed to the MLSs? Got you. So we have a couple models that we can do. If the MLS pays for it, then it's included in the marketplace. If they don't, will charge per listing, but not per listing per month or anything like that. Yeah. It'll just be that one-time fee. Yep. Easy. And the brokerage could pay okay, for all so, of their fees as well. Okay, so okay. So the model is the you know the 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 MLS has to, the MLS could pay or the agent could. Pay. I'm, I'm I'm confused by that. Like, is it both or what? It, it just that? depends. So if, if the MLS doesn't pay us at the MLS level, um, we allow uh, brokerages to go ahead and pay per listing. Or if their brokerage doesn't want to pay for it, and agents really want to pay for it and use our, our showing management, they're able to do that per listing as well. So it's, it's I guess, kind of all three, um, but we never double dip. If one pays, we don't charge ever um, an, another party. Nice. nice. Got it. So, so there's a question project? from Facebook. That's a good question. Go oh, there's a question from Facebook from Gwyneth. Uh, she uh, is saying, so it's an app for, uh, for agents to agents and consumers use the app or the website. And it looks like a, a, a home search port. It's a platform. Or is it branded or to that specific agent? Yeah, it's the Showingly, Showing is Made Easy app for the consumers. And they come to the Showingly platform, they connect to their agent in the platform, and then everything they do has the agent yeah. um, in, in the app, but it's not like white labeling it or changing what it looks like on the store or anything like that. Right. Okay, gotcha. So if they create an account on the app and they find their agent, then their agent is kind of not branded to it, but their information is in there, right? Mm -hmm. And then on, I would assume the same goes for like the desktop, right? If they signed in on that. Yeah, right now we don't have the consumer web, but that'll come out in the next month or two here as well. What we're doing okay. for both is really neat in that when we present things like market stats or any reports that we can show, we'll, we'll do it in a way where it looks like an advertisement for their agent. It'll have your information under it and you can kind of choose what you want to present to the consumer. So a lot of those kind of things are what we're working on right now in conjunction with some, uh, some agents that have asked for some of these features. So everything we develop is usually developed with multiple agents in a feedback loop, just so we know we're, we're doing it the right way. Yeah. What I, cause I'm on the consumer platform, just playing around. What I really like about it is that, you know, there's a calendar, um, when you request a showing, it goes to your agent. The, uh, the client can see like their list of showings. They can see houses that they've seen, houses that they're going to see. So, and the agent, I would assume, can also see those things uh, from their client side. So gone are the days of like, you know, carrying all these sheets of paper or your big clunky iPad and the calendar is right in there, right? Like. If you're creating showings for your client, you just do it right through the app and then it goes to their app into their calendar. So you know what you're going to see and when you're going to see it, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. And a, a big part of the, the client connection, it's uh, it's very different than other CRMs or whatever. We have a built uh, built in CRM to the agent application. And we like to call that a living connection when they connect with their clients and their clients are doing anything um, in, in the consumer application, um, whether they're favoriting homes, no on listings, scheduled showings, um, it all auto logs inside of, uh, you know, their, their CRM inside that agents in inside of the agents app and in, in agent by showing me. So um, agents, they don't have to go and, you know, look at another system and then say, oh, they favorited these homes. I should log that in my CRM. It's all instantaneous, um, which is really, really helpful. Agents have really loved that, uh, that, that feature also. Um, 
uh, they're able to take action. They, we have quick, uh, uh, quick text buttons, quick call buttons that will auto log a call whenever they click that inside the agent CRM as well. Really, really neat stuff. And then you can add, you know, notes, various notes for you, um, the agent internally for you, for you to see as well. All right, guys. So, um, there, but there's a, one more question, which I think is important from Mark Benson. What's up, Mark? We love Mark. He always watches. I love Mark. Uh, he's in Florida. He's in Naples. I don't know if you guys are down there yet. I know you're in Florida. Um, he wants to know if there's like a policy privacy, a, a privacy <laughs> policy. <laughs> um, and where, you know, where's the data and who's it shared with? You know, that's kind of, I think everybody's yeah. concerned with. I think, I think given that that's the current sentiment as well, it's been our one of our biggest priorities to make sure that we we don't mess that up. And so while we have those uh, policies and we have clauses and we have agreements and and we say all of the right things, we had to also systemically do all of the right things. And what that means is internally with our systems, we have to make sure even members of our company or different divisions can't see certain things and. Uh, a lot of stuff like that, that we had to go really above and beyond with. And then ultimately, um, of course, we, we never sell anything or we never, uh, I, I don't know. It's the, the common thread for all of our data that we do have insight for is to provide insight back to agents and brokerages, yep. MLSs sometimes. So that is, that's, that's really that's about it. We do. It's all the important information. So look, Everybody's thinking it, but only a couple of people are asking, how is this different from showing time? You know, aside from the usability factor, I think that the biggest single differentiation is that the consumers will actually have an insight into the showing process, which will mean that you won't lose them to shallow value propositions. We can finally give them a deeper proposition where you can bring them with you and, and you won't lose them. And so that's, that's above and beyond in my opinion, other than competing on the things that we have overlapping. I think the I, major, I, the major one that you didn't mention is that you're not owned by Zillow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a major one. Uh, I like that. There's a lot of transparency, you know, like that's a big value proposition, you know, the transparency of, the scheduling, uh, you know, interacting with your client in real time, um, giving them an app that has very up-to-date uh, data because of its MLS connection. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of really cool, uh, a lot of cool value propositions. I don't think it would be difficult to, you know, show this to a client and and have, I don't think that, I mean, why would they say no if you're able to collaborate like that and all be on the same page all the time, you know? Very true. I mean, that's one of the biggest problems with the real estate transaction is lack of transparency and communication, right? So this can help solve that. Yeah. At least, you know, a, a portion of it. True, true. And Jack Cassidy says, I don't care if it's different than showing time. We just don't, we just want a non-Zillow owned company. <laughs> it's us. <laughs> That's okay, cool. Uh, guys, I'm coming out with a spreadsheet that's not owned by Zillow. And when you <laughs> send me a link, see a house, put it in the Excel. Yeah. And I'll yeah. type it up. What about the yeah. privacy issue? I'll fax it over to, to the seller. Send you a Calendly link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it, guys. Well, I'll put it into my I'll put it into my AOL calendar. Anything you <laughs> want to add here in closing? Uh, we just, we appreciate the support. I think, honestly, we feel almost in solidarity in, in, with the entrepreneurial spirit of agents because the only thing harder than when we started in real estate is, is younger guys needing to go and take business and, and sell homes was trying to start this company against the David Goliath situation yeah. where MLSs didn't always want to even entertain the conversation until recently. And we just had to put our head down and keep building and building for years at this point and just trusting that we'd get our, our at bat. So um, we're grateful. Thank you all uh, so much for, yep. for believing in us and, and continuing to support us. Dude, love it. love it. Some great feedback. Thanks guys. And again, where do we go to get more information about you guys? Is it just showingly.com? 
Yeah, yep. uh, strongly.com would be the best place. We'll start doing things like markets we're live in and stuff like that pretty yep. quick here. I don't know that we have that out there, but we'll mm -hmm. start doing that on the, the website. Do we send that link over to our MLSs and like, hey, just join, just join? Is that what we would do? Yeah, I yeah. think just generally them hearing that their members and especially their brokers either or love it and want it will go a long way to, to them integrating us or at least allowing us to yeah. exist in the market. I love it. Nick, anything I missed, buddy? No, Tessa uh, just texted me saying the best comment today was, I don't care if it's different than showing time. We just want a non zillow owned company. I think Jack Jack's comment, I think, needs to be on your website as a testimonial. <laughs> I don't care what it does. Oh, Zillow doesn't own it? I'll take it. Yeah. That, that is best. You, know? you, get, you yeah. get a cool cookie. There you go. We'll do that and we'll take bets on how many cease and desist letters we get or <laughs> how quickly we get them. <laughs> and this is recorded. It's on our YouTube it's channel right. for Lab Code Agents. So go and subscribe there. If you get a cease and desist, wait, if you get a cease and desist from Zillow, you should put that in a frame. <laughs> <laughs> and put it on the website. Right, put it around the website. <laughs> That'll help. We, we've Thanks gotten guys. a few, not from Zillow though. Oh, that's good. Thanks guys. Thanks everybody. See you, Nick. Thank you, Thank everyone. You.